You know, I bought this thing at a discount, and even then I still feel shortchanged. Uh... Was it worth it, James? Was it worth every devil damn cent just to do this video? Some ways, yes. Other ways, no. I feel like if I feel like if uh, Thanos had one of these, it'd be like that scene from uh, from uh, the from oh, Infinity War. The Ooh, did you get everything Amen. you wanted? No. No. How much did it cost you? <laughs> everything. <laughs> Welcome to the main menu of the PlayStation Classic. Sony's very rushed attempt to cash in on chasing the mad dream of. Nintendo, similar to DC, chasing the mad dream of Marvel in some areas. Or vice versa. That jingle does not help things. It only reminds us of what we lost. Mm -hmm. So, James, you picked this up, you said, on a, a, a special deal, which is the only reason why we're even looking at this. Because this is not worth... How much I got it for around $60, where, whereas previously it was like $90. And now it's $40. This fails. And it's just wow. going to keep going down from there. It's going to join the Ouya soon. In a way, yeah, but hey, you know what? Look at it this way. I'm going to use this opportunity to look at some other games I honestly wouldn't do unless I did it as a compilation. So, first up on our list is a cute little Namco classic for the PlayStation. This is Mista Drilla! Which is based upon Dig Dug, I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. this, you're actually playing as the uh, son of the hero from Dig Dug. This is Susumu. And he's on a mission to drill his way down to the bottom to see why the world's being infested by these cute, colorful blocks. Kirby! It does kind of look like Kirby, like, from a silhouette, isn't it? But anyway, drop the bass, Mr. Trilla! Ow, oh, dang. That's <laughs> some bass. That's some bass. Okay, that's good music. And if you want to play a driller game where you play as the titular Dig Dug character, wait until the DS title. <laughs> okay, that yeah. was probably what I was thinking of, because I was about to say, this art style looks very familiar. Yeah, that was a game on DS. Well, we did do a video on the... On I wasn't there, Mr. though. Driller. Oh, yeah. yeah, we we did a, we did the the sequel, Mr. Driller Two, uh, a few years ago for the Game Boy Advance, and I mean that's a pretty decent version. But like this is like well the one that started it all, and well I mean boy did it make an impression. I mean if the base if the if the drumtastic opening there didn't prove you otherwise, here's the gameplay in itself. You're pretty much drilling all the way down to the bottom. But you gotta be wary though, because the further you dig down, the more your air's gonna, your air meter's gonna deplete. So you gotta grab Ooh. air capsules whenever you can. But also be careful of falling blocks as you remove all all blocks of a similar color. Mm-hmm. And um, because because these blocks are color coded in in uh, puzzle game logic, uh, if they stack with other other blocks of the same color, they disappear. Oh shoot! So in a way, it's yeah, not, only, not only a trip to the, it's not only a. a uh, one-way trip to the bottom. It's also, in some ways, a, 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 a straight-up puzzle game. Oh, jeez. Mm. Or, you know, a straight-up score attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, enough about... Oh! Ooh. Oops. So, oh, enough, of, so <laughs> enough about the game itself, because we've already gone there. James, how does the classic function compare to other Nintendo-like consoles? Well, mm. let me put it to you this way. There's no save, there's no save state features. A good half of the game there is one. runs... Well, there is one, but you need to hack this. You actually have to hack the system in order to do so. Oh, actually, debug no. mode, right? No, actually, well, there is it, part. Of, part of it is hacking the system. Another part of it is uh, buying a specific brand of keyboards in order to well, actually. No, wait a minute. I forgot about this thing's restore point. Which, though to be fair, you only get one restore point. Yep, that's, that's why I was true. mentioning. And uh, and what James is referring to is that. Oh, nice. If you mm. use a specific keyboard, you can access a uh, dev mode, like a debug menu, which allows you to actually... So let's talk about NTC, NTSC versus PAL. Mm -hmm. For a lot of these games, they use the PAL region, I believe, which is considered inferior for a lot of them, which is why... It runs at uh, 50 hertz as opposed to 60, which, to be, to, be, to be fair, for yankers like us, would be considered slow as molasses. I never no. noticed the difference until Cat Icarus oh. and his video review of this actually showed it off and it was oh. bad can however I? if you I... access hang on real quick however if you access the debug ah. oops menu mm. you can access that you can access that uh you can actually swap to nts i think you can swap to the ntsc versions of games that way which makes me wonder why this wasn't a feature in the first place like why can't i go to this menu without some random brand of keyboard in order to access the menu jesus is big like this that's a pretty important stuff to leave out because sony yeah 
Anyway, just going back to games real quick, I, I might be mishearing, but that method of hacking, didn't that method of hacking also reveal there were actually like a few other games that were like locked away as well? I don't, there, I don't uh, believe so. They, it showed that there were games in file, but they are not playable. It shows all the potential games that could have been on the console. Is it? Uh, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Is it something similar to what people found out with the Super Nintendo Classic, oops. which is that they could actually hack, and like it wasn't even using all of its file size. It wasn't even using the the file size optimally. And you could have fit more games on yep, it. Yep, actually, that is very true. You can fit uh, more games onto it if you hack mm -hmm. them into the system. Interesting, John. What's your thought about all this PlayStation Classic mumbo? I mean, I don't. I don't think I'm going to be. Uh, I don't think I'm going to make any enemies, so to speak, if I would say that I like. Oops. I would have liked the idea if, you know, bringing the old consoles back, uh, bringing the old consoles back in order for, uh, the thing is, is that, like everyone says, it just wasn't executed, right? At all. Yeah. It really wasn't. And you know what? It's kind of sad for me to say, the commercial for the fucking console, it feels like it had more effort put into it than the actual it console so itself. Good. I um, think no, no. Not I only think... the commercial, but the reviews for the console had more effort put into the console <laughs> put into it. Categorist did one of his re did his review of this thing, opening it and ending it with him in his sweatpants, and I still felt he did more effort. I think, real quick, I think the biggest way that this console shot itself in the foot was outright declining any sort of inclusion of DualShock. Yeah. yeah, that I think especially hurt. Because I think mm -hmm. some of the best titles on this platform require DualShock. Also, yeah. with Capcom releasing a lot of its own collections, and with Crash Bandicoot and Spyro doing their own collections, it kind of made it redundant to include any of it. It's like, it's this odd thing where like Sony is actively like co contradicting itself and countering its own good ideas with other ones. Yeah. yeah. Also, here, here's actually one thing that actually makes me kind of mad. I'm a huge fan of Metal Gear Solid. I got this thing mainly just to play Metal Gear Solid again, and to be fair, it was fun. But there are two problems. One, like you mentioned, no Dual Shock. So because oh, there's no Dual Shock, there's no Rumble feature, and so the Psychomantic scene isn't as isn't as good because he asks you put you your controller, controller on the floor, and he they uses the Rumble to move it around. I like that. And also another thing, they had an ample opportunity to put all the games that Psychomantis referenced on your memory card into this thing. But nope. Yeah, so, uh, James, what's this game? This looks weird, and I think I've seen this on iOS and stuff with the weird This TV right fighters. here is Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, originally released in the arcades, it stars a whole bunch of Street Fighter and Darkstalker characters Oops. if they were chibified and placed into a, a neat little puzzle game, which is... Well, as indecent as I'm about to say, is getting ripped off with an even better looking game coming out relatively soon. Oh uh, yeah, that one that, that one by Nicholas. Yeah, the one by Nicholas that got an epic that got an epic intro that was voiced over by Peter Cullen. Ooh. Nice. Mm -hmm. Which is totally not alluding to the fact that we might be seeing a couple Autobots soon. <laughs> so. Ooh, so it looks so it looks like the idea is to make the biggest uh, the biggest block of a similar color as you can, and then release an energy crystal of the same color onto it to release energy. Exactly. That's pretty much the main main gimmick behind Ooh, Puzzle Fighter. Right and um, it's funny too. It's funny too because um, well, if you're able to make make these big combos, then you can re release a whole bunch of junk to the other opponent's side. But do be wary. All that junk will turn into regular blocks within a set amount, set amount of um, turns. By the way, uh, that's okay. up. By the way I like, am now calling this Puyo Puyo Fighter. Okay. Honestly, Don't I think this you. game's a little easier to get into than, than Puyo Puyo, to be perfectly honest. But um, anyway, as I was about to say, like, it's there a similar case to, like, say... Nice. It's a very similar case to, like, say, uh, Magical Tetris <laughs> Challenge, where you have all these special... Weirdly shaped tetraminos that can either be a hindrance feat to the player, or they can they they could be the biggest convenience to them and ultimately screw you over in the long run. I want to ask you real quick because I saw it. What was the point of that chaos emerald that just appeared? Sometimes it basically destroys every every gem of that color on the playfield. Oh, nice. I love how they actually taunt one another as you're about to win. Mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so that, like... that, that, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, this and the other <laughs> the difference between us. You just suck. <laughs> you suck. 
But, uh, next character. Anyway, next? I mean, Wait, there's also I... something I did like about these uh, games, like this one and the uh, game that came after it, uh, Pocket Fighter, which was an actual fighter, but still used this chibi fight art style. It's like, it's also some of the most charming shit Capcom's ever produced. Although, I just realized, this is this is called Puzzle Fighter Turbo, as in a reference to Street Fighter, but I totally just saw a, do- a Darkstalkers character. Yeah, no, no, this game is basically a crossover between Darkstalkers and Street Fighter. In some ways, it's also a parody, too. I mean, yeah. again, the Chibi Fight style helps it, but, like, it's all, this game's a lot more comedic than it's, well, the, the games that they're representing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even more so if you're actually <coughs> with the, uh, the fighter. Oh, bless you. Oh, bless you. Nice. And, yeah, and obviously, we mentioned the title before, like, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. That's just a parody of, well, the title of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. I mean, ah, funny. But, um, yeah, all things is considered, like, I still think this is a pretty fun puzzle game, and, well, I have no shame in saying I'll be playing a lot more of its, well, upcoming competitor soon enough. Which is even sadder, too, considering we all know of that one iOS puzzle fighter that they released not that long ago with the really awkward-looking art style that tried to mimic the same thing. Mm-hmm. I'll get to um, I'll try. I'll maybe get around to that later. Well, I'm just going to say this right now, Uh-oh. Logan, you are kind of too late. I don't think you're going to be able to record that anytime soon, because I think they that game's like that game can't run anymore. Really? Oh, it's, um, it wasn't really? updated for iOS 11? More like the, more like Cap, Capcom pretty much discontinued the, discontinued the game. Ouch. Oh, this is going to suck. Go! Yes, it will, it will but, I, but hey, with any luck, I can counter him. Ooh, like that. Nice. There you go, nice. K.O. <laughs> Sorry, Donovan. You were never the popular Dark Stalker. Why are you character. playing Ken and not Ryu? Because I like Ken. Because Ken is the better. Okay. Anyway. Hey, so you got, hey, think of it this way. Ken, for being a Shadow clone, still got put in Smash Brothers. Hey, Morgan. John, Along with what the person is, he was oh, ripping off. There. John, do you have any favorite? John, do you have any favorite puzzle games? Uh, not many. Thank. That- that immediately come to mind in terms of like speaking of puzzle games this is honestly oh. the only thing the only thing that's keeping me from re- fully regretting purchasing this title why was this title exclusive for a while let's just say that for the longest time i well i've heard it i've sort of heard about this game but never really gave it like the never really gave it the benefit of the doubt or whatever like i this is the first time i ever played it straight from this console and it really makes me regret not playing it sooner. Is anybody mm. going to mention the fact that all that all the games that James is showing are just the puzzle games? <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to try. I was actually going to say way earlier that this is mostly going to be a puzzle centric uh, look at, even though we're mostly talking about well, a console that has more than just puzzle games. Mm-hmm. Okay, seeing I this s- logo, all I can think of is where in the world is San Diego? Uh, that, uh, oh, is that cartoon? Animal? I know where she's at. She's on yes. Netflix. Mm-hmm. Yes, the cartoon is out, and apparently it's really good. However, I am still a little angry that Carmen is not the villain that is, is the antagonist. Nah, she's like a Sly Cooper. Yeah, which, yeah, to be fair, in the original they do show that she is a Sly Cooper sometimes, where she's doing, where she's just stealing from villains. But we're not supposed to know that. The player doesn't know that. The player has revealed that later on. Hmm. So, James, how do we play Intelligent Cube? Okay, so Intelligent Cube is a very interesting little game where it's very simplistic. Like, this is going to be one of those games that really tests your brain power against these perplexing little blocks. Huh. Fueled by probably some of the most epic music I've ever heard in a PlayStation disc. Why do I get the feeling that this is a prototype to Catherine? In a way, it really feels like that, because your whole goal is to eradicate all these cubes before they fall they they fall down to the abyss. Hmm. By the way, I I really want Catherine on the Switch now. So without yeah, it would be cool. So without crushing ourselves accidentally, what how can you remove blocks? So to remove blocks, you have to press the cross button or whatever you select in order to um, lay down a little trap on the floor. And if you press it again, while well, there's a cube on top, it'll disappear. Now the one, th- now the one thing you want to pay attention to are those um, green cubes, which are basically like screen nukes or well, block nukes of a sort. Basically, they take out a, a whole row of um, blocks depending on where they're positioned. And well, once you get them all, boom. Why is this music so epic? It's like Star Wars. <laughs> Like, this is the kind of shit I expect from a freaking high-quality anime. Sounds like something from the Pokemon anime. Yeah. And I'll, oh, I got we got flattened. And, they, and off they like, go. No, no, this music reminds me of 
games with like who here's uh, heard of that one game, The Heart of Darkness? Yes. Yeah, it's a bad it, game. It, it, I don't like it. Eric, I think Eric it's Chai, I, th I think it was okay by Eric Chahi. Now, uh, well, while we're still on the subject of these blocks, you do want to get you want to get the white blocks and the green blocks, but do not touch the black blocks because if you do, that counts as a penalty. And well, if, if you Phew. if you clear out even one, a row of those blocks that you're standing on will disappear. If too many of them disappear, then you pretty much fall to your doom. That's... So, okay, so uh, as far as the console itself goes, you have your normal, you have your normal PlayStation controller. I don't. Now, the thing that a lot of people have been complaining about now is that if you, oh, there we go. Uh, if you fail, or not fails, ah, if you start a game and you didn't want to actually, if you didn't want to accidentally load the game, there's no way to quickly go back to the home menu and swap games like in the SNES Classic. You have to turn the whole thing off and turn it back on again. The buttons you have are a turn on and off button, and uh, whenever you hit uh, the hold on, hold on, hold Logan. That's actually not entirely true. You just gotta press the press the reset button. It'll take you back to the menu. Yeah. Okay. The reset oh, well, button is no... the whole menu. Okay. I just remember hearing someone say like it didn't like function the way it should, or like what it did do was that. Uh oh. Yeah. I'm not gonna win this one. I'm totally not gonna win this one. I just don't get why. So you can only put can you only put down one square at a time? Uh yes, unfortunately. That's why you that, that that's pretty much the whole thing about this game. You have to strategize where you place your traps and what block to remove. And say at the end of the game, if you well, say if you lose and you fall down to your doom, the game will actually rank rank your well IQ level. As if, well, this is a straight up brain brain test. Because it sounds mm. like the most times you've been failing hasn't even been that you put it in the wrong spot. You just fast forwarded for some reason and you missed your opportunity to activate it at the right time. Right, I will admit that's sort of my own fault. I got I I am a little overzealous with my um fast forward button, which I think is like the triangle button or something like that. See, like right yeah, there. I, like yeah, you want to be careful about that because. Well, yeah, there you've we seen, go. you've already seen a couple of times that I've screwed up so much, but I think that's the end of our first level. Right. It's music! <laughs> you want to know something that's even funnier? In the demo for this game, there's no music at all, and you've got this really ominous-looking playing field. What is this game? I heard of it, but why, did, why is the music, like, so fucking good? I'll look it up now, but anyway, uh, John, <laughs> what do you think of all this? Sorry, you, you're here too. Um, yeah, this, uh, what's it called? It's really interesting how like hidden gems on the uh, how there's a lot. There can be a lot of hidden gems, and in my opinion, um, during the beginning when you were showing the sc uh, showing the fast screen of all the uh, of all the games, I noticed that there was also uh, the first Persona. Yeah. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yes, the first Persona is in this collection. Okay, so. As a huge fan of Persona, of the Persona and Shin Megami Tensei franchises, if you like Shin Megami Tensei, play play uh, the first Persona and the second Persona. If you like the actual like the Persona games, don't play Persona One and Two. They are nothing okay. like uh, Third onward. Yeah, Persona Three is the best. Up until well, Persona, 4. Persona Three is where the uh, is where the like franchise Ow. got oh, its. Oof. Ow. It, it, hit, it hit its stride. Yeah, it, where it got its uh, its goddamn this music. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, oh, right? oh, oh wait, real quick, if I can, uh, real quick, finish your thing, and then I actually have information about the composer. Yeah. So basically, uh, to, it, Persona game to start with, Persona Five. Because I love no Persona. Persona Four is my personal favorite game of all time. It will always be my favorite game of all time. But I will Bye -bye. admit, Persona Five is the better game, especially for starters. Okay, so I will now talk oh. about the composer. <clears throat> Alrighty. So the composer is Takayuki Hattori. He is the grandson of Ryoichi Hattori, who was actually like he was like a super big Japanese pop and jazz composer during World War II. Like, he, he created a jazz boom after the war back in the 50s. Then, nice. uh, so then back to Takayuki, his father is Katsu, Katsuhis, Katsuhisa Hattori, who did who, who composed for things like the Fist of the North Star film in the 80s, the, uh, the original one. 
uh, the Swiss Family Robinson anime, it says, and Adventure of Tom Sawyer anime, both in the 80s. Interesting. I'm um, sorry, so back to Takayuki himself. He has done, besides this game, he has also done anime, he's also done scoring for all of the Slayers movies. Ooh. Including the OEV. Uh, he did, he did the, oh wow. He did the frickin' uh, soundtrack for Godzilla 2000 and Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla. Those are good really? ones. Yeah, those are some nice. good ones. And then yes, he's also done, he also did Intelligent Cube and another game called Ark the Lad, Twilight of the Spirits. That is something I did over here. I trust, and just gonna say this right now, folks. Trust me, I don't suck as bad as you're seeing right here. <laughs> this was honestly just the recording curse screwing with me. Mm -hmm. Like right there! <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask real quick. Um, did you say, just going back to the guy, did you say it was his father or grandfather that did all the, the jazzy soundtracks? Grandfather. That was his grandfather. Grandfather. Okay. Well, what I was about to ask is, was he the guy that composed any music for any of the Lupin the Third movies? Because I remember... Not that uh, I've seen, unfortunately. I keep I was about to... Sorry, James. You're no Ivo Robotnik. No, I'm not. But again, sometimes I feel like Ivo Robotnik really isn't his own Ivo Robotnik. Because... <laughs> yeah. Anyway, the reason I ask is I remember a friend of mine was sharing a scene on Twitter from one of the Lupin the Third films, and the set it was the one where they're like Lupin and his friend are in the car chase Lupin. chasing after the one girl, and the song and the music in that was just sublime. Oh, it's great! I gotta watch that series sometime. So that's James. Would you recommend this to anybody at its current price? No. Which is forty bucks. Yeah. I would honestly say, at the very most, get it for like maybe twenty or thirty bucks, and then afterwards, um, I don't remember the guy's name, but um, Ken Icarus brought it up in his own video. But he was able to hack the hack the young PlayStation Classic and add in like a bunch more than what we showcased he, here. So, he didn't hack it, but he did show that people who did hack it and that it's fairly easy to hack. Right. Or you know, if none of that works, <clears throat> and then you can just work with that. Basically, just it's it's such a sad shame to, that we got this subpar cons. I mean, I won't even have minded the the bare, the bare bones UI and all that if they gave us more memorable games like Klonoa, Mega Man Legends, Pac Man Worlds. Like, there's so much they still missed. Tomb Raider, could done Frogger. He's back. All that stuff. I'll give them credit that they did have a few big numbers. Like we mentioned, the first Metal Gear Solid. Um, they had Odd World. Final Fantasy Seven, Twisted Metal. They have the first Rayman, as badly aged as that was. You there are. I'm, I'm sorry. Hi. Can I bring up something really quick that I also remember from the commercial? What's up? They sort of misrepresented Rayman because they used the Rayman Two model, even though they didn't. Oh, use you're Rayman right. 2. It's supposed to be a side scroller, but they because they just want. I guess they wanted to keep it 3D. I guess Basically. Mm -hmm. they use some 2D sprites though, like the berries and stuff in the background. But yeah. But. Yeah, John, what do you think of all this? Like, do, do you, Okay, so do you think... Do you think companies other than Nintendo should continue to do this? I mean, because technically, Namco and Atari have been trying this out before. And they still do. And they're okay as, like, plug-in... As plug-and-play consoles they work. Like, do you think this is still something that should be pursued? Or should they just kind of leave it to just Nintendo? Or should other consoles, like PlayStation 2 Classic, Xbox Classic? Uh, I think, generally speaking... Just the idea of bringing the old consoles back in order to play the, uh, you know, like, I think, you know, in theory, it's a, it's a good concept to me because it's showing, like, uh, like I said earlier, it's showing, um, older people, it, it, it's showing the, the younger audience how games were back in the day, you know, mm. that concept I think is, is great, but, you know, the execution needs to be a lot better and they need to choose games that people actually that are actually synonymous or games that are like extremely good that are actually really really good but yeah people don't yeah, uh, like, like here here let me let me say the difference between the playstation classic and the snes classic the snes classic every single game on that is a is a with no pun intended classic each one is synonymous with the console with mm -hmm. the playstation one classic sure metal gear solid uh final fantasy 7 those two the first definitely persona. yeah it, it, are, mm, not really um because... They should do they they should do something where they look at a ratings board and say okay these are like the top 5 
really quick, just going to say, yeah, so SAS Classic, Super Metroid, uh, Final Fantasy VI, uh, uh, Super Mario... Mario World. Super Mario World. All those games are synonymous with the console. But with the PlayStation 1 Classic, sure, we got Metal Gear Solid and Final Fantasy VII, but Mr. Driller? Puzzle Fighter? I honest, Honestly, who the hell here is going to play Destruction Derby? That shit's fucking ancient. Yeah. 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 No. Destruction Derby One is is not that good. Destruction Derby Two is much better. Mm-hmm. And again, where the hell? That's sad. And again, where the hell's my Clonella? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or my Ape Escape? Oh wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that, I think we I think we dragged this video long enough. I think you get the picture. This yeah. Movie. Yeah. Sony, if you're watching this. Do better. Like, I swear to God, do better. Start with a console that you want to bring back, and then look at the top 20, the top 20 most highly rated games on that console, and use those. Do not just pull randomly from the selection. Look at what actually did the best and sold the best, because odds are, those are the ones people would want to play again. Yeah. Well, you can already buy Crash the Insane Trilogy. Okay, yes, that actually... Okay, here... Uh, you know what? I'll mention it later. Yeah, we we we've drawn this long, long, long. Till next time, guys. Bye.